was the reason behind revolutions and revolutionary ideas. Before we begin, do us a favour and click that like button. Also subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to be inspired by these inspiring stories every day. Who knew that the cup of coffee you're enjoying today without guilt was treated like contraband a few hundred years ago? Yeah, I know, I was shocked too. So much so that coffee was actually banned and many people were killed because they love their coffee a little too much. Crazy world we live in, right? Well, this article is going to drop your jaw because I'll tell you what, we're definitely lucky today to be able to drink coffee in public without worrying too much about our heads. I know, a bit dramatic, but that was the case years ago. Brace yourselves. It was in the year 1555, under the reign of Suleiman the Magnificent, when the first coffee house was opened in the Ottoman Empire. Two merchants from Damascus were proud founders of this coffee house established in Tatakale, Istanbul. Since most Muslims refused to socialize or gather in liquor shops and bars, coffee houses became an instant hit among them and others who preferred sober debates and intelligent discussions to pointless talks and intoxication. But Sultan Murad VI, the then king, wasn't happy with the change, and so in 1633, he passed a law that made drinking coffee a capital offense. You see, Murad VI's brother and uncle were both killed by janissaries who were known to frequent coffee houses or cafes. The insecure sultan was so dedicated to catching coffee lovers that he would often disguise himself as a commoner and mercilessly decapitate offenders with his sword without a second thought. But the love for coffee wasn't happily accepted in Europe either. It was in 1652 when Pasqua Rosé launched its first coffee house in London. But King Charles II wasn't very happy about its launch because his father, Charles I, was decapitated during the English Civil War. Naturally, the king worried about people gathering in cafes to discuss politics and wage wars. So, on the 12th of June, 1672, Charles II issued a decree that made political debates and discussions in coffee houses illegal. And so to make sure people were following the rule, a network of spies were scattered in London coffee houses by Secretary of State Sir Joseph Williamson. Then, in December 1675, Charles II ordered the closure of all coffee houses in London, but the ban lasted just 11 days. Coffee houses started mushrooming in different places in England, and soon each coffee house became home to a specific clientele. For example, Fleet Street's Grecian Coffee House was frequented by Isaac Newton, who once dissected a dolphin on one of the tables. Meanwhile, poets John Dryden, Alexander Pope, and writer Jonathan Swift often visited Will's Coffee House. Exchange Alley's Jonathan's Coffee House was frequented by stockbrokers who eventually founded the London Stock Exchange. Lloyd's Coffee House was frequented by sailors and merchants who came up with Lloyd's of London insurance market. Coffee houses were making the rounds, but not in Germany, as on the 13th of September, 1777, Frederick the Great decided to outlaw coffee in favor of beer. According to him, coffee was despicable and that since he was raised eating beer soup, people had to get used to beer, so they and their generations could be brought up and nurtured with beer soup. It was in 1786, after the king's death, that the coffee ban lifted and people in Germany were seen participating in healthy debates at coffee houses. And just like that, it became a popular drink to consume. How many days can you go without caffeine? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and check out JoJo Stories for more jaw-dropping content we're sure you'll love. The world is filled with stories going viral every single day. But how many of these sites can you actually follow? We understand that your day should start with positive stories, stories that resonate with you. And so we started JoJo Stories. Our mission is to create meaningful stories that cover everything from animals to anthropology, history to environment and lifestyle. The kind of content you read on our site will be one you'll want to share with your family and friends. We hope you'll join our growing family and be part of our community. Welcome to JoJo Stories. JoJoStories.com